cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here, Make Anything, and uh, we've got an interesting project today, and here's why. Normally, when you're designing something, you first come up with the idea, and then you figure out the tools that you need to realize it. But then there's other cases, like today, where you have the tool actually inform your design based on what it can do. One tool that's been pretty powerful for me was SolidWorks, but in particular, one very special tool called the Flex feature, which allows you to take your solid shape and bend it and twist it in ways that would be kind of tough to do in other ways. That's actually how I came up with my twist container idea. I had a regular shape and then I twisted it and figured out that it connected in a much more interesting way after doing that twist. And don't worry, I'm not doing another twist container project, but I am using that same flex feature for today's project. I was thinking about it and I realized that you could probably take any kind of two-dimensional artwork that has enough lines, extrude that to make it a thick shape, and then twist it, and that'll turn all those lines basically into fan blades. So with that realization, seeing what that flex tool could do, I decided to make some pinwheels. So today I'm showing you how to make some pinwheels in a very easy but pretty unique way that I haven't seen before. So I'm very happy to share it with you guys. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so I'm actually gonna start my design process in Adobe Illustrator, which is generally used for two-dimensional design rather than 3D, but I like to use it when I'm creating more complex lines and graphics since it handles vectors a little nicer than Fusion, SolidWorks, or really any other 3D software. So basically what I've done here is create that big circle, which is my outer diameter, about 150 millimeters, and then that inner circle is about eight millimeters, which is gonna be the center spoke for my pinwheel. What happens in between those two circles is really up to me. That's where I'm creating these graphics that are gonna be twisted to create my pinwheel design. And for this one, I decided to go with a floral pattern since this is gonna end up in my backyard among all the flowers, so it only seems appropriate. So I'm just gonna go around and draw these flower petals using a consistent 1.2 millimeter stroke. Because from my experience, that's just a good width for a nice, clean, thin line on most of my printers. As you can see, I'm not trying to be perfectly symmetrical with this design, although it will help for the design to be kind of evenly weighted all around. But as long as I keep things relatively even around the circle, it should be fine. Once I've drawn out all my petals, I can go ahead and zoom in and make sure that all those lines are connected and clean. All right, that looks good. I actually don't want a perfect circle for my outer boundary. So I'll just have the petals end there and I'll get rid of this outer circle. I'll go ahead and make a copy of this design just in case I wanna make some changes later on. But I'm happy with how this looks. So from the drop down menu, I'll select expand appearances and then expand until all those lines are converted into fills. Then I can go over to the Pathfinder window and use the Merge button to turn those all into a single shape that I can export as a DXF file. Then I can go into SolidWorks, import that DXF, and that'll bring those lines into SolidWorks as a sketch that I can further manipulate in 3D. I do wanna make sure that this sketch is centered over the origin here, so I am gonna move this sketch. And the easiest way to do that is to find the center point of the circle, and then in the Move tool, just select point to point, select the center point of the circle, and then the origin. I also noticed that my circle wasn't perfectly clean out of Illustrator, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that and create a new continuous circle in SolidWorks. But once that's taken care of, I can use the Extrude command and just select inside of this contour. And just like that, it'll pull that two-dimensional shape into the third dimension to create this extruded form. So I'll extrude that eight millimeters, then I'm gonna go into Insert, Features, and select Flex, which is that magical flex tool I was talking about. I'll use the Twist option, and then I'm gonna set all these points to zero, except for the X rotation to 90, that way it's twisting along the height of the extrusion. Then I can go up here, and I'll give it a 10 degree twist, make sure that the edges there aren't overhanging too much. This looks like my printer could handle it, but 
I really want to get it closer to 45 degrees, so I'll change that to an 8 degree twist. And that looks much better. All right, there we go. That's really all there is to it. So I can go ahead and save that as an STL and bring it into my 3D printing slicer. So another way to get the same effect is to just draw an eight millimeter line from the origin perpendicular to the plane that the sketch is on. And then you can use the sweep tool to sweep that shape up along that eight millimeter line. From there, just open up the options and under profile twist, select specify twist value and then once again, I'll give that an eight degree twist and hit okay. As you can see, the effect is virtually the same. Here you can see the results after I've printed them out and it looks just like they did on the computer. And the way I got those two color prints was just by pausing midway through my print and swapping out filaments and then continuing the print. I really like this moir pattern that I created because it has this kind of weird effect where you can only see through certain parts of the design depending on the angle that you're looking at it. I'm hoping that's gonna look really cool when it's spinning in the wind. This is my first version of the swivel mechanism and it's printed to fit on top of this eight millimeter wooden stick since I figured it would be kind of pointless to print an entire stick out of plastic and I had these lying around, so that works really well. The swivel is designed so that the pinwheel itself can snap into place and it won't fall off in the wind. That works fine, but overall the design is kind of floppy. Still, I was able to get the wheel spinning with a gentle blow, and that's all the motivation I need to do some new iterations for this swivel. I printed this double-sided version on top, and this second version that has a slot on the end for this lightweight tail, which will hopefully help the pinwheel rotate to always be facing the wind. The double-sided pinwheel, well, it didn't quite work for reasons that probably should have been obvious, but I had higher hopes for this other version with the tail on the end, and it looks really cool. So here's my first attempt outdoors, and sure enough, the pinwheel does spin, but overall, it wasn't doing too well. Unfortunately, I caught this off frame, but I just added two or three drops of super lube to the center of that pinwheel, and that alone already did a lot to help the pinwheel spin better. While that actually works pretty nicely on its own, I decided to do a couple more changes that would help it spin without the need for added lubrication. This larger tailpiece was mostly just to help with the proportions of those larger pinwheels, but my main change was adjusting the size of the hole on the swivel, as well as on the pinwheel itself, so that it can fit a bearing. So those holes are now about 22.4 millimeters, and it was pretty much immediately obvious that the bearings helped with the spin a lot. Ceramic bearings do cost more than your traditional skate bearings, but they don't require any lubrication and they'll never rust, so I thought it was ideal for an outdoor use such as this one. By the way, if you're designing something for bearings and it doesn't quite fit, my quick solution is just to use a sliver of scotch tape and wrap that around the outside of the bearing. That'll add just a tiny bit more thickness, which should give you a more snug fit. Here's a kind of bubble pinwheel that I designed to demonstrate that these things don't really have to look like fan blades at all. I also created this pretty neat star version of my Moir pinwheel using my dual extrusion BCN Sigma, as well as swapping out filaments halfway through. While the dual extrusion did make this piece quite a bit more fragile, I think it's a really neat example of just how crazy you can go. Great, so now we have a lot of different, very unique pinwheels, so I think it's about time we give these new versions with the bearings a test outdoors. As you can see, these new versions are very reactive to the wind and they spin great. Of course, the larger wheels tend to spin a bit easier since they're catching more wind, but they all work. Here's another tail I printed using Florian's green bioplastic and in my impatience, I pulled it off the plate before the heated bed was completely cool. But that was actually a happy accident because I was able to bend the plastic and create this more interesting design.
Now check out how this pinwheel seems to almost change color depending on the angle that you're viewing it at. I'm really liking that effect, so I'm glad I did all those filament swaps during my prints. Here's that crazy three-colored star pinwheel, and this one also has that same strange color-shifting effect that I love so much. Another benefit of swapping out the filaments is that this design is reversible, so you can actually get two pinwheels in one. By the way, if you remember those wind-powered fidget spinners I made in a previous video, well, those kind of work as pinwheels too. Oh, and I didn't want to leave you out if you don't live in a windy area, so I created this rather wild attachment for my longboard. Talk about skating in style, huh? Well, for a while at least. Alright guys, there you have it! 3D printed pinwheels. They're pretty unique and pretty interesting. And as you saw, they're not too difficult to make at all. If you have SolidWorks, all it takes is an extrude and a twist, and you've got yourself some cool pinwheels! As I said, this can work with just about any line drawing, as long as it's the proper thickness and there's enough lines that it catches wind. I'm really eager to see you guys, the community, come up with more designs for my pinwheel. So I'll have all these files up for free on my mini factory and that means you can just download this part and come up with your own pinwheel designs and attach them together and make your own totally unique pinwheels. I'd love to see you guys come up with some cool designs because there's so much potential in this, so many different designs you can make, but I'm always jumping from one project to the next so I can't do it all myself. So if you do come up with some variations, I'd love to see them. You should also share them on my mini factory and let me know share and share them with me on Twitter and I'll be very happy what more could you want all right guys that's it for today until next time I'm Devin this is make anything don't forget to stay inspired <laughs>